Hi everybody, it's Annette from The Art of Intuition, and today we are going to continue our talk on multidimensionality and anchoring in new realities and what happens when they're not as awesome as you thought they were going to be. Now, this is a little tricky, for our human anyway, because we get so excited when things start to materialize around us that we have been waiting for. And a lot of these realities we have, we get to a place where we have so much foresight that we can see so far ahead. And in the beginning, you don't realize how far ahead you can see. I was kind of shocked at how far ahead I began to be able to see because I thought when I saw things in the beginning, years ago, when I had seen things, they'd come in pretty quick. But it wasn't like a big thing. You know, it's like I would see this person contacting me and they contact me. Or I'd see me running into this person at a movie theater that I hadn't seen in a long time, but that had run into them in front of the Starbucks. But the energy was the same, but maybe the setting was a little different. But you just kind of see stuff. But it wasn't exactly the way it had looked, but the energetics were all the same. And they were pretty fast, but it was very, I'm going to say it seemed very minute at that time. Now, maybe now I feel like I would see the energetics around the whole thing. If I really went back now and examined it to see it was a bigger thing than it felt at the time. But at the time, it didn't feel like big earth shattering realities that were anchoring in. But we get to a point where we can see big ones. You know, we can see ones we really want to do. And you're really excited about, you know, partnering with this person or, you know, writing that book or, or doing this or doing that. doesn't matter what it is. What you see is what you see. And we usually gain access. I'd say almost all the time. You're going to gain access first when you're sleeping. I don't know anyone that's gained access first when they're awake. Everyone starts dreaming at first. And it kind of is like living the dream. You know, it's kind of like that metaphor. So I would see stuff and I would be like, wow, that's awesome. And I'm going to work toward that. You know, that's what I want to work toward. That's the dream I want to work toward. And I'd start doing that day by day, trudging along with my human would feel like I was trudging along. And it could take years. One of mine took like over two and a half years to start coming in. And then it took another maybe year and a half for the thing to play out. And then another year, two couple years after that for it to completely collapse, even though it kind of already started collapsing after that. So it didn't, it wasn't awesome. And this is where I want to talk. We're going to focus today on why was it not awesome? Because I'm trying to anchor in awesome realities. And I saw this one and it looked awesome. And there were parts of it that came in that were. But what you're going to find is because you, let me bring this around another way. Pay attention to the energetics of the dream. Don't paint a human picture of what else it has to be. Because what we'll do, or what I did, and I assume I'm not the only one that's ever done this, is you, we kind of get attached to it. Number one, we get attached to that reality. It has to be that one. It has to be that person. You know, it has to be that person I see. And I get really attached to that, or I got really attached to that reality. And then that person came in, and wow, they're not as awesome as they appeared to be. Now, I had to really go back and look at them. I'm like, why am I seeing them here differently? And when I went back and looked at every dream I had, and there was one reality I probably had, I don't know, 80 dreams about the whole reality years before it happened. So maybe more than that, maybe 180. I kind of saw the whole thing play, play out. And it did beat for beat play out the way I saw. I just, in my human brain, when my human brain came in, it wanted more out of the reality than was what was in front of me. And I wasn't at the time because I was immersed in the reality and I got so attached to the reality and I wanted that one so much, so much that I want this one that I kind of started closing my eyes to the things that weren't right about it. And I realized that when I went back and really looked at what I was seeing, the reality I was seeing, it came in for a lot of reasons and they were amazing reasons. They just were not the human reasons I wanted them to be. You know, sometimes we'll see someone coming in and we go, okay, I want a romantic relationship with that person. And it feels like that's kind of what it is in the dream, but maybe not 100%, I'm not sure. Usually I can tell with how people come in. This one maybe was on borderline a little bit, but that's what I wanted to make it, you know, so because that's what my human knew. So that's what my human was trying to pivot toward, even though that wasn't the point of the reality. So we have to start looking at these realities as what's the higher purpose for them coming in? What's the reason they're going to want to come in? You know, why would, why would I want to bring this one in? And I could look back and, and see now the amazing 
or maybe look down. <laughs> it's a different frequency now. All the program clearing I was able to do, all the twin karma clearing I was able to get through, all the worthiness stuff, all the abundance karma clearing, that kind of kicked off a lot with this, with this kind of reality, this relationship. But I had seen where I had started building on it, what wasn't, it wasn't going to be able to hold the reality I wanted it to be. So just be mindful. I don't even like that word. It's such an overplayed word. I don't know why I said that one. I don't, I don't like that word. It, it, be conscious. Better word. That's what I wanted to say. Be conscious of what you're, what you're filling in the gaps of. You know, because our human's always going to want to fill in the gaps. It's going to want to see one thing and assume the other 10 things that come behind it. Or what this is going to be. You know, did I see, you know, moonlight and roses 100% with this reality in my dreams? Not really. <laughs> but there were some beautiful parts to it. Enough for where I wanted to see what it would be. I wanted to experience the reality. And it was important. But it wasn't important for the human reasons. You know, the person's not even around anymore. That reality is not even around. The reality never blossomed into what it could have been. Now, that's kind of a second part of what I wanted to talk about. Because we can see a lot of stuff. And it can all look really awesome. And we can see all the stuff we can do when we put our human shit aside. And, and I'll be the first one to admit in that reality, I kind of had so much human clearing going on and human shit going on. I really didn't put my, I couldn't put my human shit aside and no one else in the reality could either. And if I'm the one that's going to go in and try to sort out this reality and I'm not in a place to do it myself, the reality probably is not going to be able to get to where I want it to get to because I can't even take care of what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm so deep into the program clearing, which is the purpose of the reality. The awesomeness of that coming out of that would be able to see all the other stuff that I could see we could do. There's a lot of other timelines you can see. They might not all play out because everyone's not ready for that. People are still holding on to their human stuff. You might be like me and in some cases still holding on to your human stuff. And not wanting to kind of get it all out on the table either. Not really wanting to lay out the reality. Because as a human, we have the fear if we lay out the reality the way we want it to play out. And if they don't want to play in that, then they're going to they're gonna walk away. And if we are attached to the reality and we really don't want that person, situation, whatever it is, to exit, we tend to kind of draw back. And we don't really want to lay the whole thing out on what we would consider as an acceptable reality. So what we will kind of do is we'll... I did a video a while back calling, it was something like going with the flow or are you in flow? We'll kind of go with the flow of what's going on. Even if it's distorted, it's not really getting us where we want to be. We'll kind of keep looping around into karmic stuff, which has a purpose. And there's a reason why this reality was so big for me to bring in and why I had so much foresight on it. Because there was a lot of things that I was going to do in this reality. It was important to participate in it. Just not, it didn't get me to what I wanted to get to at the end. What my human wanted. You know, my human wanted this relationship and whether it be business, personal, whatever it is you're seeing, I know for me, I couldn't get either to work because no one in the reality really was going to play in that. And that's when we have to decide. <laughs> you know, we can see all the sides of it, even when we're immersed in it. And that's why we can, well, that's a little bit true and not true. We have the capacity to see all the things we can do. We still can't see all the facets of the reality yet, but we can see the potentials. We can't see why we're so stuck in it at the time until we can get out of it. And then we can go back and look and why we got immersed in it and why we can only see one piece of it. And we couldn't, we can only see the one thing we were in. We didn't see all the distortions around it at the time or all the purposes of it. But what we could see was some of the potentials it could have. It just didn't play out that way. Now, there's different reasons for that. One is there's a higher reality that's going to come in that you can't see yet, but you had to go through this one to get to that one because you had so much clearing to do that when you got to the other one, you had to have all that shit out of the way. You couldn't be playing in any of this stuff anymore. And we also have kind of learned. And I know if I could go back and do that reality again, and I feel like eventually I'll get a repeat, probably not with the same people in the reality. It'll probably be new people that come in. Because normally I find it's easier to call on people at the frequency I'm at now than trying to drag people into a frequency I was at, you know, a couple of years ago who might still be at that frequency. Or they're at a higher frequency. Who knows where they are in that sense. I just know they're not here, which there's a reason for that. Because we're not at the same frequency. 
but sometimes we'll kind of get a training ground in the sense. It's, it's not really a test. It's just like a huge program clearing and it can take a year, year and a half, two years, three years. This whole thing played out over four, maybe longer than that. Actually, if I think about it, just due to the how long I've seen it in advance. And, and that's kind of the other thing. We see it so far in advance and when it gets here, we get so excited. We want to push it along as quickly as we can because we've waited forever. Now, you have to keep in mind the other group of person, people who are coming in, they don't know this has been coming forever. Unless they're as in tuned as you are, they got no idea. They think this is the first time they've ever seen you and you'd be like, geez, I've been waiting forever for this. Come on, let's, let's get it going. So there's kind of like that pace issue too because we've seen it for so long and we, we kind of know the beats it's going to take to an extent. And then our human fills in the other beats, usually with the human story, because that's a story we know. That's the book we've read in a sense. You know, we are not used to the higher consciousness twist on the reality that there's a different reason it's here. And is it possible you can get the other potential realities you see? Yes. Is it possible you won't because no one can play on the same page and everyone kind of wants something different and everyone has their human stuff in the way and we can't seem to get any of that stuff out of the way to come to a reality where we can really create something? That's possible too. So just don't fill in the assumptions of what you want it to be on a human consciousness plane and don't get attached to the reality. If there's two pieces of advice I could tell you about multidimensionality and anchoring in these other realities, those are probably the two lessons I learned. Don't get attached to it because when you get attached to it, then you're going to let a lot of shit slide with the reality that you know is not aligned and you know is distorted and you, you know it's not going anywhere, but you keep playing in it because you have this, you're, you have that killer word, the H word, the hope word, that it'll work itself out. You're hoping. I'm wishing and I'm hoping that we can just come together here, you know. I really want this reality and we just, I just hope... Hope they change, you know? How many times have we said that? Hope the situation changes. I hope we can go through this. And the minute you have the H word in there, you are really not looking at what's going on. And you're participating in stuff that's just gonna drag it out longer. I can also see now where I drag the reality out a lot longer because I kept hoping it would shift. Not understanding that I needed to do that shift, but I wasn't, I was clearing so much programming around it, I didn't wanna rock the boat and try to shift. Because I figured the minute I tried to shift it, it was going to collapse. And I, it probably would have. But I would have also been done with it a lot earlier and on to the next one. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> you have the H word in there. There's some distortions we have to look at. Okay. Keep practicing the art of intuition.